Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Good it's good to be together. It's nice to come together. And this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. May the peace of God be with you all. I welcome you this morning. I want to share one tidbit of information. This is a, as we continue to go through the 150th, do you believe that? Isn't this a different way of going through our 150th this year? It's memorable. It's memorable for sure, yeah. You are right there. Uh, in two weeks, which will be July 12th, uh, Art Montgomery was supposed to be here last month. And what we have done, he has sent us a video. So we, got, we will be sharing that on the 12th of July. I just wanted to let you know that. And he looks forward to when he can come and actually worship with us. But I wanted to share that with you so you can put that on your calendar. That the 12th we'll be having a video with our purpose. So keep that in mind. They look forward to being with us sometime. But as we gather together, I wanted to start and share these words from Psalm 119. Where it says, The unfolding of your words give light. It gives understanding to the simple. Those are our words from God today. The unfolding of his words give light. It gives understanding to the simple. Let us pray for a moment. Father God, we thank you for this beautiful day you have given to us. We thank you for your faithfulness to us, your children. And God, we just call upon you to continue to take us by the hand and continue to guide us through this unprecedented time that we are going through. But Lord, as we gather together, we ask that your spirit might abound and prepare each and every heart that is here and each and every heart that will hear our time of worship. Prepare our hearts, God, to receive all that you have to give. So we say, come, Holy Spirit, come. May Jesus Christ, our Savior, be lifted up. And we praise you, O oh God as we gather together in this time to worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to invite you, if you're able, to stand and we're going to sing Majesty. Oh 
What a blessing it is to be able to gather together, but to unite our hearts together with God's heart through prayer. Some concerns we received this week I want to share with you. Uh, first of all, for Karen, who's in ICU with pneumonia and had, having had a stroke. Lanigan, who was diagnosed a 10-year-old with leukemia. Ed and Barbara, who are going through a very difficult time in many ways in their life. Vicki, who, whose home had caught on fire, please be praying for Vicki. And also this morning for the Jessic family and also for the Shook family for losses in their life. There's so many going through so much right now and it's so difficult when we are supposed to be social distancing. But we do our best to pick up the phone and to pray for them and to let them know by sending a card or whatever way to let them know that yes, we are still together and we can. So let's go to the Lord in prayer this day. Father God, most holy one, how wonderful it is to come before you in prayer. To be able to say to you how much we love you, God. You are the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Ancient of Days. You are the Holy One, our Creator, our Lord, our Heavenly Father. Oh God, we love you. And God, we want to thank you for being you and for being with us as we continue to walk each day. Thank you, God, for being so close and being so faithful and true to us, your children. What a blessing that is. To have that assurance within that you are always there. Thank you, God. And God, we want to thank you for Jesus. Jesus who came from heaven to earth to show us the way of life. To walk that path of the cross. The suffering and the shame and the pain. To give his life so that we might embrace the life you had for us through forgiveness of our sins. Thank you, Jesus. And thank you, Jesus, for the promised Holy Spirit, who you said would be with us and would live in our hearts and equip us to be all that our Lord would have us to be. Come, Holy Spirit, come. And we thank you, God, for each and every one that is here this morning. And we thank you for each one that will be listening. Because, God, it's all about you bringing us together through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Oh, come, Holy Spirit, come. Be with us. And Father, we just want to take a moment right now. And I just invite each and every one here, or whoever is listening, take a moment and offer your own personal prayer up to our Heavenly Father. Oh, 
Oh, Father God, we love you and thank you for listening and hearing our prayers, but also for answering our prayers. We want to lift up to you, Karen, who is in ICU. We want to pray for Lanigan, Fred and Barbara, for Vicki, for the Jess, Jessic family, and the Shook family from losses of lives and their loved ones in their life. We want to pray, Lord, for our nation that seems so torn apart and broken and struggling. So many are filled with anxiety. Oh God, we come before you and lift up your nation and ask for your healing to come. And as we ask for healing, Lord, we also ask you to forgive us of our many sins. Forgive us in the name of Jesus, our Savior and our Lord. And we pray for our nation leaders from the president right down through the local government, Lord. We lift up to you the leaders of the many ministries in our community. For the churches and the families that are struggling to come back together. We pray for our first responders. We pray for doctors and nurses, the caregivers at nursing homes. Oh, Father God, be with us all. So many of us have those moments of anxiety as we are just struggling with what's happening. Sometimes wanting to take steps and wondering if we should take those steps. Wanting to see family members whom we love, but because of their condition, we need to stay away. We want to pray for all those who are battling cancer, all those who have lost loved ones to this coronavirus and ask you, Lord, to surround them and be with them and uphold them and comfort them. Be of those who have been diagnosed with the virus. Give them strength, Lord, and surround their family members and protect them and be with them. But most of all, Lord, I want to lift up to you the church of Jesus Christ Help us during this time to be Jesus. To shine the light of Christ everywhere we go. To say a kind word to the one who is down and out. To send a card to the one who is struggling with loneliness. To say a prayer for those you lay upon our hearts. To pick up the phone. And call a loved one. Or another family member. Or a church member. And God as I. Think about this church family here at Mount Gilead. And preparing to celebrate the 150th. I think of all the many who have lifted up prayers to you over the years. And how exciting it is when I think about their prayers and our prayers today being lifted up to you with expectation to see what only you can do in the lives of this church family. Oh God, we need you. But most of all, God, we want you to know we love you. We love you. And we want to thank you for the opportunity we have to sing our praises to you. To see one another. And to unite our hearts together. For such a time as this, we can pray. All this we ask in the name of Jesus who taught us all to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us.
us meal for my kingdom, power, and glory forever. Amen. I want to take a few moments to share something for our children, but it's really for all of us. And I got to tell you, I struggle every week. What can I share? Because it's very difficult when the children are not up front and we can't do that. And, but what can I do even if they're watching? What can I do for us if there's a watch? And I got to thinking about, you know, what we need to remember is how much our God loves us. And I have a verse I want to share from the second chapter of Ephesians. It's one verse, verse 8. This is what it says. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. The gift of God. And I thought about that. Did you ever get a gift? <laughs> it's wonderful to get a gift. This is a nice gift. It's pretty blue. It's got snowflakes on. I, I thought that's original for this time of the year. Isn't it? <laughs> and it's got a pretty silver bow. And I like silver. Isn't that wonderful? And it's, it's a wonderful gift, but when you're given a gift, what do you do with it? Do you set it aside, walk away, and just let it sit there? I don't think so. I think most of us would probably uh, ooh and ah for a little bit. Then if you're like me, you just start ripping the paper off, right? But I'm not going to rip the paper off. I think it looks nice just the way it is. But maybe I should see what's inside. It's not what we, what we normally want to do. We want to see what's inside, right? We want to know what that gift is all about. We want to know what's inside that package. It looks nice, but I want to know what's in there, right? But what do you do when you get the gift? Say thank you. But then you get excited about the gift, don't you? And you're going to share that gift by telling others, look at this gift that I got. So we're going to tear that paper off of there. We're going to open it up. We're going to, see. oh, I'm not going to tell you what's inside. But we're going to see what's inside because we get excited about it. And then we're going to start sharing with other people. We're going to say, Judy, look what's in this gift. Look what I got. You want it too, right? <laughs> And there's something good to eat. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take a piece first, but maybe I should share it. But we get all excited and we're going to tell others. We want others to see what that gift was that we got. My friends, we've all received a wonderful gift. It's God given to us through Jesus Christ. It's his love and his grace and his forgiveness that's with us each and every day. And that gift is God with you, the hope of glory. And we have that gift to share. All we need to do is receive it, and then we share it. And I believe now is the most wonderful time for us to begin to share that gift God has given to us. And that's something we all can do, whether we have gray hair like me or no hair like me. Or we are a child, we can say to others, God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. Let us pray for our children. Father God, we thank you for our children, and we know it's a different time for them also. But God, we want to thank you for the wonderful gift you've given to us through Jesus Christ. And I just pray that our children, all of us, who are like children, because we're your children. We'll receive that gift and we'll share that gift of love wherever we go. If anyone we see, may we take time to say hello and say, by the way, God loves you. So bless our children, Lord. Watch over them each and every day. Protect their hearts and fill their hearts with Jesus, our Savior and our Lord. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. God loves you. Isn't that wonderful to hear? God loves you. 
I pray that we will never get weary of hearing those words and we'll never grow tired of saying those words to somebody else. God loves you. And I say that because God patiently waits for us to tell others that he loves them. He patiently waits for us individually and as a church to embrace and share his love throughout this love starved land that we live in today. I want to take us back to last week. I, I had to share the words of John Wesley who said this to us. Say it with me. Do all the good you can. By all the means you can. In all the ways you can. In all the places you can. At all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. As we think about those words from John Wesley, let me share from Acts, the 13th chapter. Acts 13, beginning at verse 46. Then Paul and Barnabas answered him boldly. We had to speak the word of God to you first. But since you reject it and do not consider yourselves worthy of eternal life, we now turn to the Gentiles. For this is what the Lord has commanded us. I have made you a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and honored the word of the Lord. And all who were appointed for eternal life believed. And the word of the Lord spread through the whole region. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> you know, many say they believe in Jesus and know how Jesus called us to be the voice of Jesus in the world today. Many say we need Jesus to bring healing to our nation that is filled with hurt, pain, division anxiety and fear but what a privilege what an honor it is for us the disciples of Jesus all believers in Christ to share the good news for the world for such a time as this yes we believe don't we we believe in God's word the Bible is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We believe God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. We believe those words are true from God. We've memorized them. We can say them on our own without looking at the Bible. But do you remember the next verse that follows that? Verse 17 of John 3. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Jesus was sent with a mission to save the world from the darkness of sin. Yes, salvation through forgiveness comes to us from God. God so loved us that sent Jesus to show us the way of salvation. And Jesus was sent by God to bring forgiveness, healing, and hope to you and I and all the people of the world. Jesus is a shining light of God in the darkness of the world, even today. We believe. We believe. Remember what we say? Remember the our affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed? Let's share that together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He extended into heaven and sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come and judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Yes, we believe. We believe in God. We believe in God's love. We believe in God's forgiveness. We believe in God, our Father, who sent us Jesus. But here's the important question for us who believe. Do you believe the word of God lives in your heart through Jesus? Do you believe the word of God lives in your heart through Jesus? Or do you believe the word of God is only found in the Bible? When we believe, the door opens to what we know. We know as believers how God through Jesus brought us the gift of salvation. That through Jesus we have been called, we've been commissioned, we've been set forth, we've been commanded, indeed empowered through the Holy Spirit to be the shining light of God's love through Jesus Christ today. That's what we believe. 1 John, the fifth chapter, beginning of verse 1, we find everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. And this is how we know. This is how we know that we love the children of God. By loving God and carrying out his commands. In fact, this is love for God, to keep his commands. My late teen years and my early 20s, I was doing a lot of the mechanical work on the farm, on the equipment, and beginning to modify my personal car to have more power. I went through that guy. I had a lot to learn. And I was always very appreciative of those I could seek out for guidance and information. There is a wealth of information in people around me. Especially when troubleshooting a problem. And one of my go-to people was Grovey. Oh, Grovey had gray hair like I do today. He had worked on everything and anything. And I often sought out his wisdom as he worked at the machine shop at the Napa store where we bought a lot of our parts. And one time, I sought out his wisdom and understanding because I was working on an irrigation pump with a power source that had an old magneto system, electrical system. And I knew nothing about it. And I went and talked to him. And he looked into my eyes. He could tell I was intimidated because I was letting the whole issue of not understanding one thing cloud my whole vision of what I understood. You been there? One little thing I thought I don't know anything about or understand enough about, it kept me from looking at the situation as I needed to. And Grovey could understand that. He could see I was intimidated. And he looked me in the eyes and he said, Dennis, know what you know. Know what you know. Whenever you are troubleshooting, always begin with the basics. Begin with the basics. Don't toss aside what you know because you don't understand one little thing. Then he said, always check the airflow. Be sure it's not restricted. It needs to breathe to come to life. Always check the airflow. Make sure it's not restricted. It needs to breathe to come to life. Then he said, make sure you have fuel flowing as needed. Without fuel, it will remain lifeless. 
without the fuel, it will remain lifeless. And always be sure it has spark where needed. With no spark, it will never roar to life and do what it was designed to do. Groby said, Dennis, know what you know. Don't forget the basics. And know in your heart. Well, my friends, as believers, as disciples of Jesus, we need to know what we know. We need to know what we know. The air we breathe comes from God. The air we breathe comes from God. Acts 17, verse 25. God himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. God himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. The problem is that sin keeps us from breathing the life that God has given to us. keeps us from living the life he created us to live. And without God, we are like an engine with a restricted and clogged air filter, and we aren't breathing as we need to. And God sent Jesus to refuel us by grace with forgiveness, reviving us to live again. 2 Corinthians 5.17, I love this verse. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. All this is from God. With, without forgiveness from Jesus, we remain lifeless. Like a motor with no fuel. Without Jesus, we remain lifeless like a motor without fuel. And then at Pentecost, God sent the Holy Spirit who would set us on fire to live for Christ. Acts 2 says, Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. And they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. Without the Holy Spirit, we are like an engine with no spark. And we will never roar to life for Jesus. Know what you know. Know what you know. Remember the basics that God has given us. And then help others know the love of God through Jesus. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Have you looked around? Have you watched the news? Have you listened to conversations in the grocery store? Or from your friends? I believe if Jesus would stand before us right now, he would look at our nation there would be tears in his eyes. His heart would be heavy. And he'd say to us, open your eyes. Open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. May we, the church, and remember, the church is not the building. The church is the people. May we, the church, may we believe and know what we know. But then may we take that next step and say amen to Jesus. You know what amen means, don't you? So be it. Amen, Jesus. May we hear and embrace the promise of Jesus who said, I made you a light for the Gentiles that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. By saying amen, 
it means we are ready to step up. We are ready to step out and witness and show others the life-changing love of Jesus. And I do so believe in my heart that people all around us need the life-saving love of Jesus right now. Because this is not a political problem. This is a problem we, the church, have the answer for. And we have the answer, who is Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now I know for many of us that's intimidating. How do I take the word of God out? How do I share God's love? Well, hold on to the basics. Believe. Know what you know. And I invite you after you say amen, join us next week because we're going to begin to look at how we can share with others the life-changing, the life-saving, the never-changing love of God. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for the love you've given to us. And God, I'm even going to say we thank you for giving us the wonderful mission and ministry of taking Jesus into the world today. Oh God, help us. Help us to embrace the empowering of the Holy Spirit. Help us to know what we believe. And help us to say amen and go forth and share the love that will change this world and our nation. Change our families, change our neighbors, change Perry County as we carry forth the love and the hope and the forgiveness we have through Jesus Christ our Lord. In his name we pray. Amen. I invite you to be able to stand and we're going to sing together victory in Jesus. Oh, 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 oh,
seek him with all your heart and with all your soul because our victory is in who? Jesus. It's in Jesus. So go with the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit and all God's people shouted Amen. Amen and Amen. Now let us sing a closing response.